So yeah, we happy to be here today. I'm in London town. We're glad the rain stopped for us. And it's funny, this all, this radical kitchen right here, this happened over, I think me and Amor were drinking tequila during the Serpentine Gal summer party. And we're like, yeah, yam, you know, empire, colonialism. And, you know, all of us here, we're all, we are like descendants of slaves, you know, blood of a slave, heart of a king. So it's a direct um, reflection of British imperialism when you think about the transportation of black bodies and empire being built through these vessels. And we chose the yam because it's a, a, a vegetable native to the continent of Africa, but was reappropriated in the States. So what you're, serve, what, what you're being served today is actually not the, a yam in its true sense, but it's a yam in a reappropriated American sense of what a yam is. Also a sweet potato, which is like real trendy for the people that want to eat smart carbs and those type of things. So, so we're going to open up with a poem um, from a Ghanaian poet that kind of touches on the Nigerian dictatorship and it mentions the word yam. So we probably did a Google search, poetry with yam, <laughs> Africa. Wakanda forever. forever. And so Max is going to read the poem and then we're going to get into it. Good afternoon. <laughs> Not my business. Hold that down, hold that down. They picked a kidney up one morning, beat him soft like clay, and stuffed him down the belly of a waiting jeep. What business of mine is it, so long they don't take the yam from my savoring mouth? They came one night, booted the whole house awake, and dragged a landy out, then off to a lengthy absence. What business of mine is it so long they don't take the yam from my savoring mouth? Chinwe went to work one day, only to find her job was gone. No query, no warning, no probe, just one neat sack for a stainless record. What business of mine is it so long they don't take the yam from my savoring mouth? And then one evening, as I sat down to eat my yam, a knock on the door froze my hungry hand. The jeep was waiting on my bewildered lawn, waiting, waiting, in its usual silence. <laughs> Wakanda forever. So yeah, you should tell them what they're going to eat today. All right, so we're going to have two preparations of a yam serving. The first one is a yam which has been roasted for about an hour. And then we take that delicious yam and we peel it. It's a beautiful skin that's nice and crisp. We peel the yam off. You got a nice interior which is caramelized. We, we caramelize those sugars naturally from the yam on the long roast. And then it gets dehydrated. So we change the texture up a bit. So it almost gets like a chewy texture on the outside, but then soft and luxurious in the inside. We made a syrup, or actually not a syrup, we made a reduction from vegetables. So a vegetable gloss, if you want to be really, you know, French with it. Um, so it's a vegetable reduction, beets, onions, cauliflower, root vegetables, Mushroom. mushrooms, a lot of steez. Cooked it for a very long time, almost a day, and then reduced it earlier this morning for you guys. We made a, a little salat, a little salad, uh, seasoned with lemongrass oil. Um, the leftover, oh, I'll jump into that afterwards. Um, we made a vinaigrette from sweet potato, and I'll tell you what, what the, the leftover part was. So these cakes that are sitting here, um, this is a Yamington. Very, uh, we, just, we, switched the, we switched the drip up on this. So in, in Australia, they have a uh, Lamington, which is a sponge cake laid with some, some jam and some coconut, you know. So we, we made the Yamington. This is a sweet potato uh, cake layered with uh, cream cheese icing some blackcurrant jam coated in very silky coconut. And we made the cake from the leftover reductions from the puree. So this whole process, like the, the peeling, we pureed that, made a powder, goes into the, to the potato cake. No waste, you know? Sustainable. Sustainable, you know? Um, so yeah, we'll get into that in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And don't forget that soil that we put in there, man. We this approach 
from the soil to the oil. We made a soil out of uh, ginger, garlic, lemongrass, and shallots. So it's like a savory, so it's savory a play. In savory, play. savory play and a sweet play on it. And there's a, you know, there's a, there's a bit of each. When I thought about this dish, dish, I thought about the, 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 the soil this, can the be slaves traveling, Asia, the, the salad the, um, can be transatlantic, you know, ocean, potato, and all the stops that it made. It made stops. We played it like that. South America, you did. Africa, Asia, Europe. Yeah, I think in terms of the approach that we took um, while making this yam, we took into consideration the yams that we grew up eating. Um, Sometimes out of a can full of, you know, simple syrup and glucose and syrup, you know, all these things that are actually, you know, bad for our health. And we kind of flipped it and used all natural ingredients, no added on natural sugars, nothing refined. But you'll still see that the depth of flavor inside of the yam is still really sweet. And um, you should really just get a whole new kind of sensation from eating this yam than something that you might have typically had in the past. I think that's really what we're kind of trying to go for. Take away from any unrefined sugars and kind of play on the things that we ate in our past and touch all these different countries in which the the yam has passed through and just give it to you in one bite or two in the cake. So we're going to do this a little different. Um, you know, a lot of times people would just want to take the stage and just talk a lot of shit, but what we're going to do is this. We want to, you guys to, you guys in, you, we want you people, I don't want to add ginger specific assignments or norms, but you people, we want you to enjoy the food, take a look, at, take a survey of the room and someone that might have a different idea, someone you might assume has a different idea or lived a different life than you and break bread and just talk about what imperialism and empire means to you and how we could kind of reflect and reject these ideas in modern times, you know? So enjoy the spread and we're just happy to be here. And we, we're always down to talk, pull up on us, whatever you want to talk about, we're here to build. Um, I could start at the top of it. So Ghetto Gastro is a culinary collective based in the Bronx. Um, we operate at the intersection of music, fashion, art, and we use food as a vehicle to touch all those places. Um, we formed in 2012. Um, this was an idea that John and, and Les had. They, they grew up together. And um, uh, they kind of, I could, I could let Les probably go on that part of how they, they wanted to do this. But jumping forward um, in 2012, I met the both of them. And they came to me with this idea of forming this sort of guerrilla culinary unit that was just gonna like bombard everything and I was just like yo I'm with it like it sounds crazy like let's do it and at the time I was a pastry chef at WD50 um, which is now closed a very avant-garde modernist culinary institute um, and it closed in 2014 I was the pastry chef there for like five years and then I moved on uh, to Noma uh, I was the head of research for pastry and, and development at Noma restaurant in Copenhagen for two and a half years and it was kind of like a, a big decision whether or not to, to stay and move on with the new restaurant or come back. And I kind of felt like I really needed to be back with the guys and just really build this, this movement. Um, and while I was gone, they were, still, they were still like mobilizing and doing things and, and being very active in the culinary field, the fashion field. So when I got back, it was just like, we just started killing even more. We started doing art stuff and and, and uh, a lot of content driven stuff and, and TV and I mean I think now we have a space in the Bronx which we want to basically use for product development um, host parties which was basically what, how we first started out we used to do something called um, Hash House Fridays where basically um, when Les was at Madison Square Garden and I was at WD50 we used to take the, the leftover food that the restaurant didn't serve, and we would serve it to our friends. Not bad stuff, but you know things that were going bad. So for example, like a tenderloin, which was cooked sous vide, and just because the color of it was like gray, the restaurant didn't serve it, the protein was still good. So instead we would grill it and you know take root vegetables and whatever, anything that was going, you know, not, we couldn't serve to sell. And we would invite our friends, influencers, and it was basically word of mouth how we started, but that, 
kind of just built up a big way for us. And now that we have, that we're all back together, we want to start touching the community again. I think Les could talk about Roots and his involvement in the community and um, working with the garden. You can go on that. Like. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, Ghetto Gas shows about empowering the community, empowering the youth, and giving guys an opportunity that, um, that we have. Uh, I mean, I didn't have a lot of opportunities growing up, but I want to use our success as a platform to empower the, you know, the youth in our community. So as of late, I've been working on a garden where I want to, um, first of all, start a community garden, do dinners with the product that I'm growing, but this will give the kids opportunities to go to college um, by starting a, a scholarship fund for one um, kid from the Bronx that excels academically and as well as, um, as, well as um, actively in the community, you know, doing things with us and um, building their self-esteem up. Um, where we at in the Bronx at Andrew Freeman House, it's a, it's a landmark. They 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 serve kids lunch at um, they serve kids lunch and they feed the elderly in the neighborhood. So I feel like it was vital for us to, you know, be in that that realm of you know giving back to the community since we've traveled the world, we're bringing the Bronx to the world and the world to the Bronx, and. Now it's just time to uplift our community more, bring the world back to the Bronx, essentially. Um, basically, yeah. yeah. So, um, so this dish right here, it meant a lot to me because, you know, growing up, when, I, when, when we had sweet potatoes on the table, it was either candied or made into a pie, you know? As of late, I changed up my diet because I'm becoming more aware of our surroundings and, and our environment, and I, I want to do better to make sure that the youth, you know, they have something to look forward to and that, you know, they're, they're not growing up in, in landfills. Uh, we're, we're working on even our plateware as well, trying to use biodegradable utensils and plates, as you can see, you know, um, just to remain sustainable. We are revitalizing our own through sustainability which is Roots, and that's going to be uh, the forefront. That's going to be the name of the, the gardening program that I'm starting in the Bronx. Yeah. Amazing. You did. Yeah. So, uh, you know, also, Mac touched on um, we both had jobs. I worked for Jean-Georges, a French chef. I worked in um, Danny Myers, 11 Madison Park before Ghetto Gastro, and I wanted to do my own thing. I always did. We would talk, John and I would talk about it. John came from a diff, you know, the fashion world, the design world. My background was, you know, culinary arts, but we grew up in the same neighborhood and we both were cut from the same cloth and we had the, the same ideas of entrepreneurialism and, and, uh, and, and changing, our, changing the forefront for our future, which is the children, you know? So, um, we came up with the, uh, John came up with the name Ghetto Gastro, you know. After a nap. After, He's a nap lord. After a nap, you know. <laughs> and he knew that we was running around here ghetto. And he knew that my background was gastro. So we had to make it pop, you know. 